grade 8 students, I am Miss Alexander, your social studies teacher. Welcome to lesson 7. Today we are starting a new discussion on the subtopic central government. If you were unable to join us in the previous session, I would encourage you to mark off chapter 5 in your New Horizon book 2 and you can revisit it after today's session to see what we would have covered already in the previous sessions. Now, for those of you rejoining us today, we're going to go through a quick recap, as always, to see what you would have recalled from the previous session. And for the new students joining us today, they will have an idea as to what we would have completed in lesson six. So here goes. In the previous lesson, we looked at the third branch of government, the judiciary. Do you remember one of the functions of the judiciary? You can think about it. We did mention that there are at least three functions. And so you can recall quickly at least what one of the functions is. All right, so if you would have said interpret the laws, administer the laws, or apply the necessary sanction to lawbreakers, then you are correct. Good job. Now, here are two true or false questions. I would like you to pay keen attention, observe, listen to the questions that are asked, and then respond to the questions. This diagram correctly demonstrates the hierarchy of courts in Guyana. This diagram correctly demonstrates the hierarchy of courts in Guyana. So look at the diagram that's on your screen. At the base, we have the Supreme Court, also known as the High Court, the Magistrate Court, and then the Appeal Court. Is this diagram correct, true or false? If you said false, you are correct. The magistrate's court is at the base of the hierarchy of courts, which means that they're at the bottom. So where you're seeing Supreme Court, the High Court, instead the magistrate's court should be there. And that Supreme Court and the High Court now goes into the place where you're currently seeing magistrate's court. If you got that answer correct, good job to you. Let's move on to our second true or false question. Civil and criminal cases are appealed in the Court of Appeal. Civil and criminal cases are appealed in the Court of Appeal. This statement is true. This is true. Good job, everybody. All right, great. So I'm very happy that you remembered some of the key points that we made in the previous lesson. You did a very good job. So give yourself a tap on the shoulder. All right, now let's move right into today's session. And the lesson for today is again, central government. During this lesson, you will be given takeaway activities. Now, these activities may require you to either work independently or you may require the assistance of someone else, perhaps someone in your village or your community. And so I encourage you to complete these activities because it will help you to understand the concepts a little bit clearer and you will be able to apply it to what is happening in our society and appreciate the topic that we did even more. So pay keen attention to when I mention takeaway activity and ensure that you complete them after today's lesson. All right, what are our objectives? After today's lesson, you should be able to identify the functions of central government as well as discuss the economic and social functions of central government. 
So let's start with central government. What is central government? Central government is the body that looks after the affairs of the entire country. It includes the local day-to-day -day affairs of the nation, as well as the country's interaction with other countries around the world. For example, interaction with continental neighbors or the neighbors in the continent of South America, as well as member states of the regional body CARICOM, of which we are a part of. So now let's look at the functions of central government. The government of a country performs a large number of basic functions in order for the country to progress and for citizens to enjoy a good quality of life. The functions of central government include economic, social, and political functions. Now, let's look at the economic function. One of the functions that government performs when we speak of economics or concerning the economy is revenue. To obtain monies for social services, central government has to raise revenue. This is done in several ways. For example, taxation. Taxation from salaries through a system known as pay-as-you-earn, or P-A-Y-E for short. You can ask your parents or other working adults about P-A-Y-E, and they will tell you that yes, as uh, earners, income earners, they do pay P-A-Y-E tax. Another form of collecting revenues is the collection of custom duties from imported and exported goods. As you know, Guyana export many, many items based on our resources, for example, timber and our sugar and our rice. And so from those exports and even from importing items, we collect custom duties. There's also taxes on profits from state and private entities that are also collected. Another way revenue is collected is through consumption tax. That is when imported items are purchased. Also, some locally produced goods, for example, timber and beverages. Another form of the government raising revenue is through sales on license for television stations, radio stations, and cable service providers. And another way as well is through the collection of withholding taxes from savings at the bank. These are just some of the ways taxes are collected to help pay for the repairs to our roads, and other services provided by government. So here's an activity for you. Can you name some institutions which work to ensure that taxes are paid? Think back on it, perhaps you might have heard it in a commercial, or perhaps you might have heard your parents making reference to it sometime. All right, take just about two seconds more to think about it. All right, thank you for attempting to answer that question. So you're going to compare your response with what I'm about to share with you. The two institutions that are responsible for collecting taxes are the Guyana Revenue Authority, which has their central office in Georgetown, and they also have other sub-offices. And the second institution is the Guyana Post Office Corporation, which also has its central office in Georgetown and many other post offices around the country. So those two institutions are responsible for collecting revenue or taxes. All right, so let's move on. A second economic responsibility of central government is to provide employment opportunity through the development of public and private enterprises. Thirdly, government is also engaged in fixing wages and salaries for workers in the public sector. The Ministry of Public Service and the Ministry of Finance, for example, are responsible for doing so. Finally, the government tries to ensure that the country has a balance of trade. When our import bills 
exceed our exports, there is a deficit in trade. We need to borrow money to buy the things that we do not produce. When we do this, we have to repay with interest, and this makes our country poorer. So you see, those are the economic functions of central government. Now let's move on to the social function. Every government must try to improve the quality of life for their citizens. It can be done by providing a number of social services. These include one, training and education. Educational institutions are provided from nursery to tertiary levels to enable citizens to prepare themselves adequately for the world of work. For example, the Ministry of Education is tasked with this responsibility. Also, the government is committed to providing training opportunities, whether it is academic, technical, vocational, and continuing education to achieve functional literacy for the youth and adults at all levels. Employees across the public sector are afforded continuous training and development. The Ministry of Public Service is responsible for managing the public service of Guyana through the provision of professional personnel, training to ministries, departments, and regional administrations. The second social function is religion and customs. The government encourages the practice of religion and the development of customs in society. To help promote culture, the government granted seven religious and four non-religious holidays here in Guyana. The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport ensures the diversity and social inclusion of the Guyanese people. The third social function is sports. Sports is a discipline for developing ourselves physically, mentally, and spiritually. Here's a quick activity. Can you identify a sports club or community center in your community, village, or region? Perhaps this is a good opportunity to think about it and to identify a sports club or a community center so that you too may utilize the services that are provided by such group. Like religion and custom, the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport is responsible for developing and promoting sports among the citizens. The fourth social function is health. Health facilities are provided to develop an efficient, effective, and healthy workforce. As the saying goes, the nation's health is the nation's wealth. The Ministry of Health is responsible for providing public health care. The fifth social function is civil defense. Civil defense is provided to prevent anarchy or lawlessness. The government establishes institutions to protect its citizens. So here's an activity. Can you name at least one institution responsible for protecting its citizens? Think about it. Think about one institution you know about here in Guyana that is responsible for protecting its citizens. I know you know the answer, so you don't have to think too long on it. And I just want to say in advance, good effort on answering this question. If your response was either the Ghana Police Force or the Ghana Defense Force, you are correct. Good job. Now let's talk about the Ghana Police Force. The Ghana Police Force protects the internal affairs here in Guyana. The Ghana Defense Force, on the other hand, protects the state of Guyana by defending its borders and protecting its citizens. Let's move on to another social function, infrastructure. Infrastructural facilities must be maintained. 
These include roads, bridges, ferries, stellings, portable water supply, electricity, and sea defense. The Ministry of Public Works has responsibility for carrying out infrastructural works here in Guyana. A seventh social function of central government is care for senior citizens and the destitute. The government provides care for citizens and the destitute by providing old age pension, medical care, transportation, and homes, such as the PAMS, the Dharamsala, and night shelters. Like other governments, our government also has the duty to address environmental problems. Government takes steps to control such problems as pollution, drug abuse, conserving our rainforests, and other resources. Here's a takeaway activity from today's lesson. So I want you to grab your pen and book if you haven't done so as yet and take note of the activity. All right, let's go. You are required to write an article to the editor expressing what would happen to us if government does not provide social services. So today, we would have listed approximately seven social services that central government is responsible for providing. So your letter to the editor will express your views as to what will happen in our nation if those social services are perhaps two you can identify two that would be just fine you can express what will happen in our country if those social services are not provided well students we are now going to wrap up on today's lesson so let's take a quick look at what we would have learned today we said that central government is the body that looks after the affairs of the entire country. The second point that I would like for you to take away is that the three basic functions of central government are economic, social, and political. The third point is that central government carries out its economic function by raising revenue, providing employment opportunities, fixing wages and salaries of workers in the public sector, and also ensuring balance of trade. The fourth point is that some social services which central government provides are education and training, infrastructural works, health and civil defense. Well, students, this has brought us to the end of today's lesson. I trust that you would have learned so much about central government and what takes place in our country. Do remember to complete the activities that you might have missed out on during this session and remember to complete the takeaway activities before our next session. I am Miss Alexander saying bye for now and see you in the next lesson.